Another mosquito-borne illness is hurting poor children in the developing world. And so, naturally, the environmental left is leaving these people to suffer in search of more complicated, costly, and slower-acting solutions. Wash, rinse, repeat. This time it's Zika virus. That's the mosquito-borne virus that's sweeping Brazil. It's infected a million people. Zika is suspected of causing microcephaly in unborn babies whose mothers have contracted the virus. Microcephaly is a birth defect typified by a small skull, resulting often in brain damage. I say this time it's Zika virus because this is the latest in a long line of mosquito-borne illnesses that can be easily and cheaply controlled using a life-saving treatment. That life-saving treatment has the ability to mitigate millions of deaths worldwide every year, caused by yellow fever, dengue, sleeping sickness, encephalitis, the plague, West Nile, and malaria. That treatment is DDT. DDT is the chemical pesticide that has been used to control mosquito, lice, and flea populations around the world. In World War I, mosquito-borne typhus killed more servicemen than bullets. By World War II, because of DDT, typhus was no longer a problem. In fact, according to the National Academy of Sciences, by the 1960s, DDT had saved half a billion people from death by malaria, mostly poor people in developing countries. But then the war on DDT started. Studies about bird health and cancer were manipulated by the same anti-science wackos that attack our oil sands now. Most of the opposition to DDT is based on the book Silent Spring by environmental activist Rachel Carson. In her book, she misrepresented data about declining bird reproduction related to DDT. In fact, in all that spraying of DDT, during the 40s, 50s, and 60s, there were no illnesses. Watch Richard Trent of the nonprofit Africa Fighting Malaria explain here. There have been so many studies over the years that try and find an association between DDT and some human health, uh, some human health harm. Uh, all of these studies are weak, statistically insignificant, and they don't comply with the most basic epidemiologic criteria that we need to prove cause and effect. We're mixing up association with cause of harm. Uh, so no, I mean, there, there, is no, there is no evidence that this is harmful to humans. Now, DDT was banned, and ev a person now dies every 30 seconds from malaria, and that's just malaria. That's not counting all the other deadly diseases that mosquitoes carry. In Sri Lanka, DDT application had dropped the cases of malaria from 2.8 million down to just 17 cases. After the ban, the cases shot back up to 2.5 million. There's no vaccine for Zika and one is years away from development. The other solution being batted around is genetically engineering mosquitoes, modified to pass a kill switch gene onto their offspring, preventing them from reaching maturity. Now these are long-term solutions, and DDT is cheap, effective, and available right now, when babies and moms in the developing world need it the most. The left would rather fund late-term abortion on demand to terminate the pregnancies of women exposed to the Zika virus, rather than allow the spraying of a highly effective pesticide. For these environmentalists, human babies, viable human babies, are less important than rumors and innuendo about disappearing songbirds. If these diseases were first world problems, I know these environmentalists wouldn't be waiting around for a solution they felt was eco-friendly enough while their own children died. Save the birds, kill the babies seems like a really stupid solution to me. The environmentalist's ideological opposition to pesticides isn't based in science. In fact, we know it's a death sentence every year for millions. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed.